Okay, so now you should have located some sources that you might be going through. And I want to cover a few uh, basic tips on reading and evaluating the sources so that you can get a better understanding of the different types of sources you're going to be working with. Now, we have a lot more content that's available to you and tutorials that are available online. So if you want something a little bit more in depth, we have some uh, other resources that are going to be uh, available to you. Uh, one really good way to do this, especially when you are uh, still getting used to reading academic literature, is to use the different sections of the article to help you navigate the content. So I'm going to go back to that example article that we were taking a look at before, the reproductive success of colonial tree nesting water birds in prairie pothole wetlands and rivers throughout northeastern South Dakota. Um, just that title is a good sign that it's a scholarly source uh, because they do tend to have longer titles that are a little bit more specific as well. And uh, I also see I got a page range here that's kind of indicating that it's a scholarly source because it's longer. Um, not all scholarly uh, peer review research articles are lengthy. Uh, there are some from the sciences that can be fairly short, but it is more common for them to be a little bit more lengthy. A moment ago, we saw that there's um, lots of references, so that indicates that they did their research. And then we also see that there's multiple authors that are showing up uh, as well. And so those are all good signs that we're uh, working with a scholarly source here. Now, uh, I'm going to be using those different uh, parts of the, the paper in order to navigate this, but also I'm going to use it to prioritize my reading. So what I would recommend doing in terms of uh, a nonlinear reading approach is to start out with your introduction section. Sometimes it's literally called an introduction, and other times they don't explicitly call it out that way. It's just something where it's uh, there um, as the, the paper just starts, and then the other sections will come up later. So every journal is a little bit different in terms of how they do this. But I would go through that introduction section, and then once I hit an area where I start to see something where it says methods, methodology, or in this case, study area and methods, then I'm going to skip that section for now uh, because that's where they're actually getting into how they collected their data. And instead, what I recommend you do is jump down to the end of your article and look for it. There's a couple different sections that are going to be helpful, but they're um, right at the end of the articles typically. And that could be the discussion section. And if you have one where it has a conclusion as well, then that's going to be something to look for because that's kind of where everything gets brought together in terms of uh, the discussion of the topic, the data, and how they did their research, and it's all presented to you in terms of the limitations and what you can understand from it, what you uh, maybe should avoid understanding from it, where more research needs to be done. This is really one of the best parts of a, an article, and in some ways, um, probably one of the best places to be citing from if you're going to be citing um, articles. Um, so I definitely encourage you to, to go to that section as the next place that you would go, and if that's still looks good to you, then that's where it's great to back up and now read through the entirety of the paper. And because uh, part of the reason why it's helpful to do this is because the methodology section, if you're not an expert in the area, the methodology may not make a lot of sense to you at first. And so having that context of the introduction and the discussion and conclusion, that's going to help you understand what is going on a little bit better so that when you start to see some of the things in terms of the data collection and analysis, uh, it won't just uh, feel like um, it's uh, a bunch of information that doesn't mean anything to you. So that's a really helpful thing to come back to a little bit later after you've already evaluated that that article is going to be helpful on your topic. Now, there's a couple of other things that you could be doing in terms of evaluation. If you notice that they uh, that the, the people who conducted a study are funded by a particular agency, that can be helpful to look into. Sometimes it can be helpful to look into the authorship of sources, too, to see whether or not... Uh, uh, somebody may have a conflict of interest in terms of speaking to an issue. Other uh, things that you can look at uh, are whether or not you are getting diverse voices included into the uh, the article itself. Are you getting uh, different perspectives uh, from, uh, let's say, uh, folks of different genders or folks where uh, it, it would be useful to have non-white perspectives in addition to um, the other perspectives that tend to show up in the literature a little bit more. So uh, lots of different things to be considering in terms of how uh, the different authors speak to your uh, sub-questions as well in terms of composing those sources and how it all comes together.